Okay. Anyway, John here. Uh, a lot of people have asked me by private emails how this mixer was made. Well, this is just a windshield wiper motor off a car, off a Saturn car. You get it at the junkyard. And then you just bridge the motor back here so that it only goes one direction. I'd actually like to have a magnetic stirrer and a hood. But I'm in a wide open space and I got a breeze through here. And uh, anyway, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm mixing this uh, hydrate. And hydrates, depending on what the hydrate is, can have different colors to them. Like most rocks found in nature would be have a blue color to it. And a hydrate locks the water in in this paste. And this is an elm paste. So I'm heating this slightly. I'm going to probably only take it to 100 degrees to mix it thoroughly because I, I need a lump-free paste to paste on the uh, separators in between the lead plates. And I got one working over here, and I'll uh, come back in a few minutes and show you exactly. I'll go over this again one more time on how to get the sulfate out of two of the same sponge lead plates. Because it really doesn't make any difference. One plate under charge is going to become lead and the other plate is going to become PBSO4. So you have an oxide on one side and you have a, a metal on the other side. So it's going to want to move some electrons through the load so that both plates can become PBSO4. And uh, and that's just the way a storage battery works. That's the way a lead acid battery works. But in our case, we're using ammonium, ammonium aluminum silicate. And we've added to this an SO4 compound to give it this blue tint. And that would be what you guys know as copper sulfate. So. The thing about it is, is what we need is to get the current out of the battery for a long, sustained time for very little input. And so uh, the Elm's a good candidate and not really that harmful. The hydrate can be many things um, because the hydrate locks up the water and its bond. And so. What's going to happen here when I heat this is the water is going to come out of the bond. And I'm looking to make a material that can hold the water retention in the battery. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Anyway, what I'm showing you is these are two of the same plates. And the thicker these plates are, the better. Make sure you wash your hands after doing this, or get a good pair of gloves that won't have holes in them. But uh, these plates are sulfated, because these batteries are done. So the thing that you want to do is you choose which is going to be the positive plate and which is going to be the negative plate. Then you apply the charge, and for about 10 minutes, low current. And that's going to drive the sulfite, sulfate off the plate. And then you reverse these leads and charge the battery normal. And then you have a positive and a negative. And the longer you let this form in the solution, the, the better the battery is going to be. Now, I have not noticed the leakage everybody's talking about because... I've got converted Elm batteries over here, and believe me when I tell you they have the current, they have the current. And they're not dropping down like everybody says. So here's what I suspect. I suspect 
that it's the, the material that you're using for for an insulator because it has to be porous to let the transfers through and at the same time be absorbent and at the same time hold the water locked up and not and and not it has to be an acid resistant paper so in these these early batteries especially the will the willard this separator material is acid resistant but it's porous so and by the way these batteries you know if you think the elm battery leaks you just talk to uh, Peter Linderman or myself about these after you form these with sulfuric acid and you'll find out that they don't hold their charge the way everybody thinks they do and that's true of every lead acid battery if you just leave it and you don't do anything it's going to leak down too and especially like in your car if it draws current say 300 mils to run the alarm and all the computer and everything so that you don't lose a memory you're not going to last too long you know that battery is going to sulfate up so you know I want to sort of give you an indication that not every battery is perfect this is not the same as is making a classroom demonstration on a galvanic cell where you got zinc on one side and you've got you know copper on the other side and then you've got a dilute sulfuric acid and then you got a salt bridge between that this is not that and spacing is very important on these plates and and the amount of plates is very important so I want you to understand that and what I'm going to do after forming this for 10 minutes is I'm going to put it on the load and show you why I've decided to change the chemical mix a little bit and I'm not ready to give that out I will give it out when the time is right and I'm totally satisfied that it works without failure so I just don't want anybody saying well he told us this and he was wrong because I don't want to be wrong in this situation I want to be right so I mean this is probably a, a technology that's never been explored in the battery industry because they only know things one way they never look outside in the forest to see all the other trees just looking at one tree so anyway what I'm gonna do is be right back here and I'll show you this has been sitting around for quite a while and I'll show you that it doesn't lose its charge so hold on a sec now anyway if that battery lost its charge then there's a ghost in here because this has been sitting and notice it's not the same acid because the balls aren't floating so it's not sulfuric acid see this is a little bit different solution and it's it's elm and when we put it in here we mixed it about 25 percent elm to the water that's in this battery and there's no way that this thing's losing its current this has a lot of current and if we go over here to if I take this off there and I go over to this Ford battery which is back here which is also an elm battery and I just put it's going to be hard to do because I'm only one hand in here I, anyway if I put uh, the clips on there there's no way that that Ford battery lost its power either and that was converted a long time ago so I'm just telling you if you do this right and the forming's right and that with the materials then you're going to get a lot of power out of them you know and they're going to work well because that's been an experiment of mine for many many years now is how to get rid of the sulfuric acid in the batteries 
and so it requires doing some chemistry so if you don't know chemistry you know things have to balance here and the, the formula is quite different in this setup so that's what Chuck and I do we uh, we have a lab and some people do fungus and some don't it depends how interested they are in the subject but the, the failures are is when you solder wires here on these plates and then uh, the, the, uh, the chemical actually crawls up the wire and then eats the wire away because it's copper so it's best to use lead bars coming out and not wires and we did it for experimental results but we we actually know better and we know what to do so we you actually need a, a lead post coming up like this off the plates and it should be yet yeah, lead don't don't try to use solder or anything like that because it's got tin in it so I'll be back anyway let's go back to our chemical and you can see that a little bit of heat if I stop this machine a little bit of heat is making a nice paste see it so this requires a little bit more stirring and this has taken a little while to do and this is just a piece of welding rod connected to the windshield wipe promoter and something you can adjust this on because to go try to buy a chemical steer right now for me is out of the question anyway here's two of the lead plates they're both the same plate you can see they're washed thoroughly and dried and then what I did is soldered lead bars actually melted it together and uh, it's because the two plates are going to go like this with a separator in between and so you can see that that's bubbling a little bit so you got to keep stirring this otherwise you'll burn it so anyway I'll be back okay so I have my uh, chemical mixed I'm going to show you this so pay very close attention put the crystal on the plate let it soak in there see it scrape the excess off So what you want is this nice little even crystal. Cross that plate. Like that. Okay. So I'll be right back. Okay, this is distilled water. <laughs> and this is elm. Just dump it in there. Mix it up. You'll be mixing this for a few seconds unless you warm the water up. But I'm I'm just looking for for the material to dissolve in the water a little bit. Okay, just like that. Then take and soak the insulator in it. Whatever you decide, I, I like using paper towels because if anything goes wrong, I can fix it. So saturate that. And then place it on top of the plate that you pasted. And you give a little more space into this. One-handed cameraman. Makes it tough. Okay, so that's what you get, just like that. Now, take some more of this chemical that you've mixed up, the hydrate, the alum. Remember what I said, make a paste. So you just paste it in there. Now 
the opposite plate. Just put it in there like that. Now these are two of the same plates. Okay? Go wash your hands after this. Be back. Come back. Now don't forget. This is a cell we just made to test the theory on. Okay? So it's it's been sitting here forming and you can see what it's doing. It's a 2.9 volts. It's a 2 volt cell, so typically on a lead acid battery you want 2 volts above the cell. Okay? That's all your car alternator does. It's all it can push. So, what's running your car is the alternator, not the battery. Otherwise, you'd be SOL. I'll be back. Battery runs out here. You can see what I've done here. This is going to have no charge because they're both the same sulfates. Okay, so what I've done is I've just put this crystal that I've made. And that's what you have right there. They've got no charge at all. It, it, you, let's put it this way, not enough to drive this oscillator, which these do very easily. So because it's not formed in, in the sulfate, sulfates on the plates, so you have no, no power, period. So watch very closely when I come back again. All right, I'm back. And what I want to show you is this battery here, the one that I was showing you in the cup, um, you can see that it's standing right there. And you can see it on the graph right here. It's standing. Okay, now the minute you load an Elm cell, let me just hook this up and I'll be right back and I'll show you. All right, the minute you load an Elm cell, you're going to see this impedance drop right here because this is the potential of the cell without being loaded. So that's just a standing. So all that acid batteries and every battery is going to drop down to where it wants to run at. The, the point is, how long can you run that right out to the end without damaging the battery? So you can see this is sitting at, at 300 milliamps. And that's really a lot for this. So let's let's turn it down. And burn my motor out again. Okay, so now we're at almost 200 milliamps, which is okay for this because So remember, we only formed this for a little time, but you can see that the plates already started to turn color here. So the forming process, two gray lead plates is not a problem to do this with. Now, I want to point out to you that I've marked one side with black and one with it, and I've put that cell that I showed you in there. Now, I want to Okay, sorry about that. Ran out of memory. Anyway, I pointed out to you that I've marked one black and one positive. So, positive lead. This is going to become the positive. And this... is going to become the negative. And right away you can see that it that it's it it drew current. And so I want to I want to bring this up to about 1.2 amps. And I'm going to leave it there. Now listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to leave it there. And you can see right away it's bubbling. This is taking the sulfation and breaking it up because this direction, right? So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disconnect it. I'm going to reverse this. Doesn't like that, see it? And I'm going to wait until that goes down. 
And there it is, it's going down. Now what I'm forcing to happen here is to get the sulfate off these plates. And then I'm going to reverse the charge as if it's a normal charge again. So battery goes to zero, sulfation goes one way, then the sulfation goes back the other way. So I'm going to leave that here for 10 minutes and I'll be back. Anyway, I want to come back to this real quick. This battery that we made that I saw, showed you in the beginning, where it's forming it. This is what it's doing. 10 minute charge after the sulfation's driven off. Okay? And this is why I'm trying to find a chemical mix that's very safe, that can sustain this power ratio. And this hasn't dropped in uh, that much in 20 minutes but it's going to follow the same crystal curve down. So I'll be back with the other battery as soon as 10 minutes is up. All right, anyway, 10 minutes. 1.3 amps. So now, just disconnect it. Just disconnect it. And put the electrodes, or put the charge where it belongs. Of course, now watch what the supply is going to do here. See, there's no... It's going to go back the other direction now. And this is going to be the way the battery is formed. But what I wanted to do was take the sulfate off the plates. So now I'm going to adjust it. To one amp. And I'm going to leave it there until this is formed, till this climbs higher over here. See? There's 2.2 volts. There's 2 volts. So the cell's going to operate between these ranges. So see what it's going to do is it's going to take 1.2 amps, 1.1 amp. Now it's going to start to fall. As it falls, it's building one plate into lead and one plate into lead oxide and that's going to give you the differential in the cell so PB on one which is going to be this one the positive and PBSO4 on the other one because it's a lead battery except that you've changed it to a crystalline battery with a hydrate chemical. And uh, so we're going to let this form up and then we'll come back and we'll just do a chart on it. I'll be back. It's about uh, three or four minutes more and you can see where the current is now. Now I'm going to adjust the current to bring it back up. And see now our total potential is 2.8 at 1 amp. And so you don't see any bubbling in this cell because right now it's converting the lead. But you can see that it's forming gray on this one and red on the other. So this is definitely going to be the positive plate now that we've driven the sulfation off these little plates. And that's what these plates look like right here. So when you wash these, you're going to see that it's, it's white in here. There's crystals of white. That's the sulfate. That's the sulfation on the plate. When these two plates become the same with this formula, you have no more energy. You must recharge this one. It's just that we're making a rechargeable crystal battery. And that's what I want to accomplish with this because I, I want to use this for large amounts of power for a long period of time and the large amounts of power for two plates you know is anywhere between say 20 milliamps and 450 milliamps so that's going to be up there as far as this battery goes because this isn't a C10 rate that's on discharge here.
it's just C5 or better and you can see here that this is still going with this but this is drying out so if I wet this then it'll increase just a little bit but you can see how it starts to change color right away after you drive out the sulfates in the plate so this is not considered dead until it's at a half a volt because if I take this load and take it off here and run this load right here which is the oscillator which it's going to be doing so if I do that and just disconnect this and we can see where this battery shoots up to and the reason that it does this and can sit there and go up if it was leaking it would be going down so it's not leaking so now if we just take and uh, hook up the oscillator to it you can see there it is so let's just hook it up just set it in there I actually need another clip here but just do it this way right now okay so I've got my oscillator running with plenty of light I'm drying 110 milliamps with this oscillator and you can see I've recovered and now we'll, we'll I'll come back and I'll show you where this is going to go down at okay anyway I've left this on here and it's drying out pretty good so there's no the crystal is forming it's getting dry inside it's at about uh, 50 milliamps now and you can see what the curve and that's a lot of power for a 10 minute charge you know just forming it not even really formed yet but it's typical of a crystal battery to do exactly that this is where it recovers and then we add the 100 milliamp load to it and see it coming down here and it tries to recover but it's running out of fluid there's no crystal around it to retain the water so I'm going to point that out to you but anyway back over here to this one now we're down to 300 milliamps and so we're, and if you notice these posts down here, they've changed color. One's brown and one's black. One's sponge lead and one's lead. So now if I bring up this current a little bit more, give it back its one amp. adjust because it's taking it's at 2.7 volts that's really more than what you want on the cell but just to get this so that the video isn't four hours long um, I'm going to push it a little bit and you can see there's still just a few little bubbles occurring and the major thing is to keep this moist because it's driving the water out see it here driving the water out of the crystal and then it'll suck the water back in as it discharges it's typical of this type of battery and so once again I'll go over to you. there's a hydrate there's the alum it's heated it's mixed together and uh, we added just a little bit of copper sulfate into the mix so that uh, we could change the formula to balance and so this is what we've got and so this is how you exactly make this now Chuck's making another one over here and forming it and I'll show you that yeah so Chuck has made an identical battery see the water and he's kept it moist He's going to be charging it with these four cells, and I think that's what uh, 
mm -hmm. 80 milliamps, 90 milliamps. 80 to 90 milliamps, yeah. correct. And so we're going to be charging it in the sun. We're going to keep this in the shade to keep it wet. And then we'll come back and we'll do this one too. Actually, I'm going to make a lid for this one and then we'll show you that before we take yeah. it out. Yeah, okay. So we'll be back. Now, uh, I'm back here. I'm going to point out something to you. In these uh, Dale resistor boxes, this this uh, paper wraps up the resistors and they've got it glued together in spots to make a little hole so you don't really want to take it apart. But the one that you did take apart, if you hold it to the light, you can see this is what I mean by porous. But this is just a little bit too porous. So when you put it together, you see, you don't see the light through it. And so, the ions and the electrons, they can just travel right through this with no problem. And it makes a good insulator. But you got to soak this in the elm first to make it absorbent. And then it's just going to wick from the crystal. However, if you want to use the separators out of batteries, like this Willard, this material, see here, you can look at it, you can see the light through it. Gonna get it in the light there. But it's not too porous, it's just porous enough. So a double coffee filter or uh, a tripled up paper towel will work just fine in your experimental battery. But here's this one dried out now, holding about uh, 45 milliamps and doing exactly like a crystal battery. Yes, yeah. Does it have any power? We can find out. So let's go over here and uh, connect this to the motor. And uh, make sure that we get a plus lead. the motor's at 100 milliamps and the motor needs 200 and well almost 200 mils, 150 mils to run. But now I'm just draining this out. And of course it's down to 8 tenths drawn out. So let's go back and basically you're just shorting it out right now. Let's go back so there's not quite enough liquid in there to uh, and go back to the oscillator and it's back down and it's going to continue out but anyway I'll be back in a few minutes to show you these other two cells I'm back after a long while here this is uh, 10 minutes after standing to see that the cell really didn't leak down that much and that uh, we didn't have any internal shorts in the cell but anyway this is exactly how the crystal cell goes this is probably one of the best curves and uh, we ran the motor out and got it down to here and then we put the oscillator on and got it down to here and of course the cell now is completely dried out and it's standing right there and it's standing at 25 almost 30 milliamps dry and the oscillator lights are on so we have light and that's a, exactly how a crystal cell operates anyway back to this one over here this one's pretty forming up pretty good and uh, by changing the hydrate mixture you change the color a little bit and so I'm trying to stay with chemicals that balance out I don't want any imbalance the hydrogen peroxide will not balance out with this and what will happen to that cell is hold on just a second and I'll show you Okay. 
this was the one that we made in the first videos and you can see that it's formed this heavy crust from the hydrogen peroxide and that's just taking power away from the plates because it's confining the alum um, and uh, even though it's maintaining you know 80 milliamps here which isn't much it is still maintaining this little oscillator with quite a bit of light now putting this into a toroidal form would be much more efficient than what we've done here but we just wanted to see what the stain power is with the light on this crystal cell but these are regular hydrate cells and you can see here that Chuck's just got it going through a a crystal which makes kind of a nice nightlight star pattern and then he's running an extreme amount on this lead cell on this other hydrate cell uh, with, a, with a bigger coil here and many more LEDs in here and so I want to give you guys as much information as I can about these cells and how they operate and what to look for and what to expect because what you're looking for is uh, and what I'm doing here is looking for lights for at night and I don't care how the, how the energy gets there as long as it gets there and it stays like that and so I'll be right back and I'm going to show you the one that we built the other day okay remember we built this cell the other day and it's it's hydrated pretty good and it's uh, now charged pretty good so it's formed up pretty good and uh, I'm looking for a little bit of current out of this one although I'm not going to do an uh, extreme amount for a load with this since it's just going to be running these oscillators here and so I'll be right back and I'll show you some. All right. So what I'm going to do is take this headlight and hook it to this crystal cell. But remember, I'm one-handed. So let me just back off a little bit here and I'll come right back. There you go. So you can't say that it doesn't have any current. Because that's pretty darn... That's one half the brightness of the light because it's a 12-volt light. I'm going to come back to that light bulb in a minute. And I want to show you where this curve is. So it's just staying right there, hanging around and running these lights. And this is pretty dry because it's formed a crystal on the uh, surface. Anyway, this battery, 12 volt car light. And uh, so what I want to do is get this to uh, clip up here. So you can see. I have, to do, I have to hold on to this, so hold on. Anyway, there's a 12 volt car headlight on the brightest filament on the uh, Elm Crystal battery hydrate that we built two days ago. So, it's got current and quite a bit of current so this is going to uh, make a really good crystal battery you know form the way we did it and we don't want to over discharge it because of the way the material is the impedance is lower so or higher excuse me and it worked out pretty good and uh, it would run our loads over here for a real long time, especially these oscillators. And so I just wanted to point out to you how to make these, how you form them, and what they end up looking like. I'm using a plastic box, but you don't have to. And uh, you can see that it's just sitting there at 100 milliamps forming 
And of course, when I turn it off, it's at the two volt level, so it's not quite where I want it yet. So, so I'm going to just put it back to 300 mils and walk away from it. Don't mess with it until it's formed. But anyway, that's how you do it. And uh, once again, thank you all for your support and uh, watching these boring videos. And I hope that you understand something about the chemistry of this battery. Don't look for it to be like a lead acid battery because it's not. Its impedance is different. So it runs in a different voltage range. range. And uh, it can supply a lot of light for you. But anyway, thanks.